The Gemma di Alba, first of all, has been one of the first uh, trials for uh, newly diagnosed Philadelphia positive ARL patients, adult patients, in which we uh, used a completely chemo free approach. In fact, the Di Alba um, is based on an induction uh, with dasantinib alone plus steroids, and uh, after 85 days of uh, dasantinib, patients are evaluated for hematological as well as molecular responses, and afterwards they receive at least two cycles of blinatumab. Blinatumab is a drug, it's a bite antibody, which is uh, uh, meant to activate T-cells toward leukemic B-cells toward CD19 antigen. And in these trials, we used uh, two cycles were mandatory, um, and patients were evaluated for molecular responses after the, these two cycles, and this was representing the primary endpoint of the study. And afterward, uh, post-consolidation treatment was left at investigator choice. So patients continue with uh, uh, at least uh, other two, three cycles of linatuma plus dasatinib, or otherwise they were allocated uh, to transplant uh, procedures. Overall, the protocol uh, um, enrolled 63 patients. The, patient, uh, the, the protocol was uh, close to enrollment in January 2019, and so far the median follow-up is uh, 14 months, with some patients which are already beyond two years from enrollment. 63 patients were enrolled, there was no upper age limit, so patients were enrolled from the age of 18 and the eldest patients was uh, more than 80 years old. And uh, uh, overall what we saw is that regarding primary, the, the aims of the study were to evaluate the activity of uh, this chemo-free approach in inducing MRD negativity. Uh, among secondary endpoints we also wanted to evaluate how blinatuma was uh, capable of further reducing molecular responses after treatment with the study in balloon and we also wanted to see as a secondary endpoint overall survival, this is pre survival, cumulative incidence of relapse, the feasibility of the trial as well as the safety of the trial. In general, the trial was very successful. We had, uh, at the end of the induction, 29% of patients achieving a molecular response. But regarding the primary endpoint, which was obviously the main uh, objective of the study, uh, after two cycles of blinatumab, 60% of patients achieved a molecular response. And quite unexpectedly, these results was even better following, uh, in the following cycles, achieving 79% of patients achieving a molecular response after the fourth cycles. So far, again, the updated results are even more promising than uh, the previous uh, uh, results uh, presented at the HIA meeting. Uh, overall survival is 95% and disease-free survival is 89%. Uh, at present, 24, 24 patients have been transplanted. We also try to be um, a little bit more straightforward in terms of evaluating disease-free survival according to various uh, uh, clinical and biological features. And as expected, uh, we did not observe any uh, relapses in patients who did achieve a complete molecular response. And quite unexpectedly, if we stratify patients according to the type of fusion protein, either P190 or P210 protein, we observed that, that uh, the uh, patients harboring the P210 fusion protein did not have any event. The other point that is very important is that we also try to uh, make uh, some translational uh, uh, research analysis, particularly we wanted to evaluate what is the role and the impact on prognosis of uh, additional karyotypic lesion, particularly Icarus and uh, the so-called Icarus Plus uh, cases, which are namely those patients who have both Icarus deletion as well as CDK3 and or Pax5 deletions. We had 24% uh, um, of patients having this uh, uh, phenomenon and interestingly we could uh, observe that patients who have uh, the Hikaros Plus uh, signature are those who are likely higher risk of uh, relapse. These patients are also the ones that tend to um, acquire mutation of Ebola gene throughout the time. Uh, so uh, just to conclude a little bit, this, this, uh, this trial has been very important because it's the first chemo-free trial for the treatment of a group of patients that in the previous years was considered with the worst uh, prognosis ever 
it's uh, capable of inducing molecular responses in a high percentage of patients and this turns obviously in a, a very much improved overall survival as well disease-free survival. We obviously have to be careful about some patients. We can realize clearly that patients who have a Icarus Plus phenomenon are those in which we need to further intensify treatment, possibly adding transplantation.